This is John Black, Super Chemist. Keep in mind, this is not an instructional video. This is a blog, a vlog, or whatever you call it, of me learning this reaction. This is only the second time I've done this reaction. Keep in mind, ether is flammable, very flammable, and uh, I'm sure that the turt beetle and all these chemicals are all bad for your health. Uh, so if you repeat anything in the video, do it at your own risk. We're here to make some turt pentyl alcohol. Um, through a Grignard reagent. Um, I'm not going to go over this kind of quick because I've already done a Grignard reagent. This is my second one. Hopefully I'll do a lot better than the first one. Uh, first we have to make the uh, Grignard reagent. Now I made this exact Grignard reagent in a video called uh, Ethyl Magnesium Bromide Synthesis Grignard Reagent. Uh, so I'm not going to go into it, but here's the uh, molar masses and molar volumes. I divided everything by two. This one I doubled by two because you need two moles. But then I doubled everything by two, and this is what I'm using. Here's my setup. I've got a 1,000 meter milliliter three neck round bottom flask with a condenser on it and two separatory funnels or equalizing funnels. Uh, this first funnel is going to have 90 milliliters, because I need 104 milliliters to get the uh, ligands, right? That's the bare minimum. So I got 90 and 50, that's 140 milliliters, that's obviously more than I need. I want to have more. Uh, so anyways, uh, here's the ethyl bromide, I put 90 milliliters of it in with that, and I put 50 milliliters in for the uh, magnesium in, into the round bottom flask. Now, when I did my first granite reagent, I forgot to put anything in there. And that's good. You need stuff in there because, it, one, it acts as a heat sink, absorbs some of the heat. The other thing is, is it acts like a blanket to protect your product that you're making from the oxygen and the carbon dioxide and the water from the air. Because those things will react with what you're making. You know what I mean? It'll ruin your reaction. Without that blanket, you're really going to get a low yield. Uh, so this time I'm putting in 50 milliliters uh, to cover it up, the metal. And uh, all I'm going to do is drip it in to make my Grignard reagent, which is ethyl magnesium bromide. Uh, so here we go. All right, here's my setup. I did do one thing different. I had to put 100 milliliters of diethyl ether in here in the pot because it wouldn't cover up the uh, the metal. The other thing is this. This is my acetone in that. It was supposed to be right here, and then I'd have a hose coming up to this to this, so that uh, it was like an equalizing funnel. But I got a leak on it, and some of it came down. Some of the acetone came down into the reaction vessel, so I took that off. And I'll probably just use this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start dripping this in. I'm going to drip in maybe about 10% and let it sit there and make sure that it's, it goes off. If it goes off and starts running, then I'll you know drip it in so that I keep the temp at like 40 degrees. You know what I mean? Uh, or whatever, 34.6 degrees for the boiling point of the whatever. Somewhere around there at 40 degrees. I want it to reflux, but not too much. So I'm going to turn off the camera right now. If you really want to step by step, go back to my first Grenade reaction where I made uh, The only difference that I'm doing here is I am uh, I got a lot more. I didn't put anything into the pot with diethyl ether. I just had metal in here on the first Grenade. Bad mistake. Another thing I did different is I have a gram condenser here instead of a regular condenser. And then I have another condenser. And a drying tube. I hope you can see that. So I'm going to drip this in and I'll get back to you. All right, another thing I did different is I got a stir bar on here. Probably can't see it. Let me close it up. You can see uh, this is the color that I wanted it to be before. Milky. I like that milky white look. It's going, it's going up now. I just started dripping it in, maybe 10 milliliters or something. And, uh, the temp went up from like 20 to 25 C right now. So I didn't even stop. I'm still dripping it in. 
and we'll just go from there. All right, so I got all the ethyl bromide in there. So now I have I've made my uh, nucleophile, my ethyl magnesium bromide, which is a Grignard reagent. All right, uh, it stirred the refluxin out of 38, and it took it all the way up to 45. I guess as you make the ethyl magnesium bromide, you know what I mean? It's in there, and the boiling point temperature goes up. So that's a good thing. Uh, I'm going to let it stir for a while until I see the temperature start going down, and I'm going to fill this up because I had it for here, but that uh, set funnel wasn't very good. So I'm going to just add it into here, and then I'm going to drip that into here to make our vineyard uh, reaction. Okay, the acetone and the uh, diethyl ether will be in here, and that's our electrophile. Nucleophile, electrophile. So now we need to make the electrophile, right? <coughs> this is the equation. We're gonna, we already made this. We're going to add some acetone. This is our electrophile. Why? Because this is electronegative. So it's going to pull electron density away from the carbon, right? You have a positive carbon. Negative carbon, positive carbon. They meet up, and this ethyl group is now on here. Look, there's two carbons, one, two. It tagged right on there. But see, because it's negative, the double bond went up on top of here and made three lone pair electrons instead of two. So it's negative. And then your magnesium bromide is your positive. And this is, a, this is your tetrahedral intermediate. It's an alkoxide salt. It's polar, so it's going to go into polar solvents, right? <clears throat> like water. Uh, this is the molar mass, density, molar volume. And remember, I'm taking a half, I'm take, dividing everything by two, right? I got supposedly half a mole there. So I'm going to divide this by two, which is 37 milliliters. So that's what I want to add in acetone, but I don't want to add it straight. I want to give it some kind of uh, solvent uh, that it's in, which is obviously going to be diethyl ether. Um, I was going to put 37 milliliters, and then I thought, well, it is the solvent. I want to put at least a little bit more in, right? Plus, I have OCD, so 50 is a good number for me. So I'm going to put 50 milliliters of diethyl ether in there. It's a little bit more than being a one-to-one -one ratio. I'm going to put it into this other SEP funnel, right, and drip it in to the ethyl magnesium bromide, right? This is our Grignard reagent, and we are now going to conduct the actual Grignard reaction, which is this. And then we'll get to this at the end. So I will drip that in and uh, get back with you. Oh, and also you can see that... Uh, all the metal is pretty much gone almost. The last like three milliliters or something I dumped into here, right? From here to the acetone and the diethyl ether. Man, it all just like solidified. You can see. It's almost a big chunk. Uh, it's still boiling. So I'm going to let it just sit here. I'm actually going to go to sleep. Because I'm about ready to fall over. Let me bring one thing up before we get on to the next step here. When I was adding the acetone diethyl ether mixture to my Grignard reagent, right, to do the Grignard reaction, that is very, very exothermic. When I made propanoic acid, I bubbled CO2 in as my electrophile instead of uh, acetone. And it did produce a little bit of heat, but it was no big deal, really. You know what I mean? It barely kept up the temp. Uh, the acetone, you, I couldn't even drip it in. What I have to do is drip a little bit in and turn off the uh, set funnel so it wouldn't drip anymore, let it react, and then drip a little bit more in. Because if I just dripped it in regularly, it was just too much. It was, it was too much. Uh, it's very exothermic. Um, now, on my propanoic acid video, when I got done, uh, I had the salt of a carboxylic acid, bromium, magnesium, uh, propanoate, right? Here, we have the salt of a uh, tertiary alcohol. So we have salt in here, and what I did was to change the salt into an acid on the propanoic acid one was I put in some acid, right? 
Here we're going to put in acid too, but we don't want to put in hydrochloric acid like we did for the propanoic acid because it's too strong. So it's just too too exothermic. So the acid we're going to use is water, cold water. I have freezing cold water here. I have an ice bath here, and my product. You can see it's all solidified in there. I can't even move that uh, thermometer or anything. It's, so, it's just totally solid. So what I'm going to do is I don't want to put the water in too fast because even with just water, it's very exothermic. I put this uh, ram condenser on here that's not filled up with water or anything. Um, just in case it starts boiling away, you know, this could just stop some of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drip this water in very slow. I only have half of it in here. How much water am I using? Well, I'm using about 400 milliliters. Why? Because I had about 400 milliliters in this pot right now. If I had 300, I'd use 300 in water. If I had 200, I'd use 200 in water. Now, is that the correct way to do it? I don't know. I don't have any directions. I'm just guessing. <laughs> that's my guess, and that's what I'm going with, okay? Uh, so I'm going to drip this in, and I will get back with you when I have all that dripped in plus the rest of the 400 milliliters, and uh, I'll get back with you then. Basically what we're doing is we're changing the salt of the turk penal into turk penal alcohol. We're turning it from the salt and alkoxide to the actual alcohol. Uh, I just dripped in about 10 milliliters and I had to turn this off because it started going up to the gram condenser all the way up to here. I was like, whoa, what the heck? So I turned the water on this water cool condenser. And now I'm going to start dripping it in again. All right, there we go. Got it dripping. Hopefully this condenser will keep that under control, the heat. If not, I'll just turn it off from dripping for a little bit and let it cool down. All right, I'll get back with you. I probably put too much water in there because the last bit of it. It wasn't raising the temperature or anything, but that doesn't matter. Too much is okay. Too little is, is not okay. Okay, now I got 30 milliliters of sulfuric acid in here, and then I put water in, so it went up to about 120 milliliters. I'll put it in this set funnel, and then I'm going to drip it in. You can see there's two layers. See how the top ether layer? Yeah, getting close. See the top ether layer? And the bottom has the salts. I drip this this acid in there through the sub funnel, and uh, just to make sure that I got everything hydrolyzed, and uh, try to separate this a little bit, and get rid of this uh, solids in here. So when I get done doing that, I'm just going to drip it in until I see the solids disappear. All right, I kept dripping it in until I could finally get my stir board to go. You can see here, see how it's bubbling up. That's the reaction between the acid and the metal and the salt that's in there. So I still got a lot of, probably only put 30%, 10% or something of that in there. There's still a lot left. Uh, but I'm going to hold off until I see this stuff stop reacting. Then when it stops reacting, I'll put a little bit more sulfuric acid in. You can see that it's still. Still a lot of solid in there. Now uh, you can see there's two layers. This is how much is left of that 120 or whatever milliliters I had of the sulfuric acid. You can see up on top there, there's uh, like little pieces of metal. It's, the starboard is making a vortex there, bringing it down little by little. And as it comes down, it reacts with the sulfuric acid. So I'm going to wait until all that metal is gone. It's going to take a while though, but you can see there are two levels. It is biphasic. Here's the, the line, and uh, like I said, I'm not going to add any more acid, even if it doesn't get rid of that metal. But I am going to wait, as you can see. I don't know if you can see, but I can see that, like right there. I don't know if you can see that or not. Yeah, you see a rocket come by every once in a while. That's the metal. 